I think the the relatively uh, positive reaction from today's uh, Philippine markets mm -hmm. has been expected. It's uh, kind of a follow through from what we saw last night in the in the U.S. Uh, so it, this has been, uh, you know, it's been well said. It's been it's a well telegraphed move by the mm -hmm. Fed. Uh, the uh, markets have been expecting it. it's been largely priced in so uh, no really surprises. not surprises yeah, yeah that's right so you now what what uh, I guess the the real uh, trick is what what happens next you know yeah good question right well I think JP Reggie. has a good question for Reggie, great. Yeah. I'm glad you brought that up this is JP down here at the pits of course we're looking for moving forward we're looking at possibly six straight hikes according to the dot plot here. In fact, they're saying that uh, the sooner the, the Fed is going to try to move as close as possible to get to these normal um, interest rate levels. Some people are saying it's about 2.5% in, uh, in, 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 in the near term for the U.S. Um, to, this morning, we saw the first one. What are the odds that we could actually see the, the Fed actually uh, hiking or, or, inc or, or accelerating the, uh, the rate at which they raise interest rates in the U.S.? And what might that do for emerging markets such as the Philippines? The, we think it's actually good news uh, that the uh, Fed is starting to raise rates. Uh, it's been uh, anticipated for, uh, I would say, about two years now. Uh, but there seems now to be more deliberate uh, uh, kind of moves to, to move up those rates. Uh, we're seeing a more benign Europe right now, uh, less reasons not to raise the rates. Uh, and so uh, we'd like to see that uh, fulfilled to the expectations of the market. Uh, having said that, uh, we think a gradual move is better for the market, um, less volatility, and as a result, um, uh, whether it takes uh, you know six moves or four moves, uh, we'd like to see things kind of spread out a little bit more, uh, a little bit more deliberately and uh, and gradual. Um, hopefully, uh, that will allow the markets to absorb each of these uh, potential moves and uh, and react accordingly. Okay, so that means you're more. Uh you know, you're more in agreement with this dovish tone that the Fed is adapting under uh, Fed Chair Yellen. I, I think so, because uh, there's been a lot of data points uh, that have uh, have been you know, fairly uh, convincing that uh, it's been about time to 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 move up the rates. But there have been there are some that are not. Yes. On the oh, of course, of course. But yeah. I think in this case, yeah. there's a much more much more uh, or higher consensus uh, this time because uh, the global markets have been a little bit more a little bit more uh, economically relaxed. Politics is another thing. All right, let's bring it back home for a bit. Okay, we have a BSP, Governor Titanco, you know, allaying fears. He's saying, okay, we're still watching developments and all of this. Now, a lot of analysts, all that said, still think that the Banco Central will move to raise rates here in the country in June. What are your thoughts on that? Well, there will be pressures for the BSP to do so. Uh, we'll, we're expecting the Philippine peso to continue to depreciate. Mm -hmm. uh, there could be uh, some pressure on inflation, uh, but uh, there may not be an immediate to, uh, reason to do so, as uh, Governor Tatanko mentioned. There seems to be still some room between uh, where current inflation is and where the, the top uh, ceiling of the corridor that they've, uh, that they've set for themselves. So do they have to do it um, in... In, in March, um, they may, but uh, I think uh, they don't have to. Uh, there's still some some room for uh, for the the BSP to to wait a little bit. Okay, well, I was going to wait a little bit before asking you this, but since you brought it up, let's talk about the peso. It is still, uh, you know, like it's it's weakened about um, a percent, uh, less than a percent against the dollar so far this year. So it's down just about. Okay, now it moved a little bit. So now it's just down about one percent year to date against the U.S. dollar. Where do you see the peso ending 2017 on? We think uh, it'll probably end around, on average, for the year around 51 to 52 pesos per dollar. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason for that is there are real domestic pressures of um, that and uh, objectives that the Philippines is trying to do in order to support the growth. We think that the, the trade gap will continue, or trade deficit will, uh, will still be very meaningful uh, as we continue to try to import raw materials. Uh, we're still a very import-driven uh, 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 economy. Uh, we also think that, um, that yeah, the, 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 the increase in rates in the U.S. will also drive uh, 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 currencies and investment possibly outside the Philippines. But um, so we think that uh, that will. Well, that will lead to a more, you know, depreciation of the peso. But that's to be expected, actually. Okay, so no panic over there. Now, let's talk positions a little bit more specific here. Where would you 
you know, increase your positions? And where would you, or which mm. sectors would you decrease your positions in? And are you overweight on any of these going into, you know, these rate hikes? The, uh, you know, we've seen a, a five to six year bull market in the mm -hmm. Philippine composite. So it's been, uh, uh, it's actually been pretty good for a lot of corporates here in the Philippines. Uh, and on top of that, we've seen uh, record low uh, interest rates and borrowing costs. So we, we've seen you know, the broader sector um, of the Philippines actually uh, perform. Uh, but I think that in a more uh, disciplined environment, uh, we think that the consumer sector will continue to grow. Uh, we're a very mm. consumer-driven economy. Uh, banks, uh, financials, I think, will also be good because uh, uh, if you expect rates to rise, uh, that certainly uh, benefits financials. Okay, Reggie, um, the other thing that the Fed was talking about a while ago also is the specter that inflation is rising and perhaps one of the worries they have is that inflation could actually outrun, uh, outrun, it, outrun recent, um, recent averages. In fact, if you look over here, you'll see that uh, February inflation in the Philippines also at its highest since 2014. Now, given the fact that there's also inflation to deal with in, uh, in, in the markets, how are, what, what certain sectors might be affected by rising inflation and, and how would you, play, how would you uh, I guess, how would you devise a strategy to, uh, to, play, uh, to uh, shield uh, portfolios against rising inflation? Well, the, uh, in a rising inflation environment, uh, well, like I said, uh, it doesn't mean uh, that the, uh, the BSP will immediately uh, try to increase rates. Uh, but uh, it can impact some of the consumer sector because um, as uh, costs uh, start to rise, uh, you know, we expect uh, you know, consumers to be more careful with, uh, and more disciplined in their spending. Um, but uh, like I said, you know, we're, we've seen a six-year bull market uh, with, and GDP growth continuing to, to grow. So uh, there will still be liquidity in the market, but I do expect consumers to be more, more disciplined. So where does all this liquidity go then? Ah, so um, I guess that's the, the, the big question. Uh, there's so much liquidity in the markets right now, in the capital markets especially. Uh, so that money, even though uh, borrowing costs will go up, um, uh, the, the investors will, will still need to put that money to work. And so what we're seeing is our, we're seeing investors put more of that money into short-term uh, instruments uh, like T-bills, um, three-year government paper, uh, in terms of the bonds, we're seeing the sweet spot is really around the five-year to seven-year bonds. Uh, it, uh, it doesn't mean you can't do anything beyond that, but it can be more challenging. You probably have to pay up more in order to attract uh, longer tenors uh, like, uh, like eight and ten years.